So today, um, I want us to look at uh, introductions. I want us to look at uh, developing an introduction. And uh, what I'm going to cover in this session is uh, introductions for standard essays. I'm saying this because uh, you might have other kinds of introductions. For example, I think when you're doing a thesis or a dissertation, you'll have a section called introduction. That section is different from what you're doing right now. Sometimes you may also be given questions uh, in which the instructor has also included specific guidelines for what you must include in the introduction. And therefore, in those cases, you need to follow the guidelines provided and ignore what I'm going to teach today. The, uh, so for this introduction, it's just for standard essays where you don't have any specific requirements for the introduction and the conclusion, okay? But I know sometimes you might have other kinds of assignments where you have specific uh, instructions for the introduction and the conclusion. If that is the case, then of course, you just follow whatever they are asking. Okay, so uh, what is an introduction? Introduction is basically the opening paragraph of a standard essay. Okay, it has various purposes. One of the purposes of, uh, of an introduction is to capture your reader's attention, to offer a little bit of background information, and to also reaffirm the direction the entire paper, or rather the entire essay will be, will be taking, which includes highlighting some of the main points or the main arguments. That is the purpose of an introduction. I've seen cases where writers preempt the body within the introduction. They already talk about all the points in detail within the introduction. And then that, that just amounts to repetition because if you already preempted all the points you have within the introduction, uh, when you go to the body and you start talking about them, then it's more or less just repeating yourself. So introduction has its own, uh, should have a, a different kind of content from the rest of the, of the paper. Things that you, you will not be repeating because if you already discuss the points and uh, point out the, the main ideas and the main uh, arguing points in the introduction. Therefore, it's more or less like you've already completed the paper, uh, yet you're still in the in the first paragraph. Okay, so it's very important that you understand what kind of content should go into the introduction of a standard essay. And remember, a standard essay uh, is a kind of an assignment uh, where you only have one line of inquiry, one subject, just one topic. And the standard essay is usually very short, about two to three pages, uh, sometimes four pages. And the standard essay will normally have about five uh, paragraphs. So distributed as follows. The first paragraph will be the introduction. And then you need to have three body paragraphs. And then the last paragraph uh, will be the conclusion. That is the structure of a standard essay. But again, let me just remind you guys that essays are not really a type of assignment. It is just a structure of answering questions. So you'll be given any kind of question and uh, you'll be asked to use the essay structure. So any kind of question, even mathematics can also be, uh, be done as an essay. The only thing you need to remember when you're working with essay structures is that you need to have an introduction, the body and a conclusion. So I don't want you guys going out there thinking like essays are like a type of assignment. You know, it's just a structure of answering questions where you are required to have an introduction, uh, the body, and a conclusion. Okay, so I think that is out of the way now. Um, I, there's a little bit of confusion, people thinking that uh, essays are like, uh, you know, a unique kind of assignment where you you have certain things you need to look at. Uh, in reality, it's just a structure. That's how I understand it. It's just a structure of answering questions. So you can be given any question, you'll be given any kind of question, and the instruction may demand that you use the essay structure. Some cases, in some cases, you may not need to use the essay structure, in which case, you may not need to have an introduction that follows uh, the guidelines that I'm going to talk about in a minute. In fact, you may not even have the introduction part altogether the, and the conclusion. You can just go straight away to the answer. This is particularly the case when you have questions that are numbered in a way and uh, the different questions are not and uh, necessarily related to one one subject. You know, if I give you like five questions, question one, discuss effects of COVID-19. Question two, 
discuss effects of corruption. Question three, a different kind of uh, question. In, in that case, you, you are not expected to have an introduction unless you decide to approach each question as an essay on its own, uh, which will uh, write in a separate file. Okay. But if you decide to go along with uh, you know one document, one file, you'll just go straight to, to, to the answer for each part. Okay. So an essay will just basically have one line of inquiry, which is one, one topic. Okay. So I think that is uh, clear. Okay. So now let us look at the specific structure of, um, of an essay and try to understand now what are we supposed to have in, um, in an essay, okay? So number one, a, an essay should begin with a hook. So a hook is basically an opening statement you use to capture the attention of your readers, okay? Uh, it must be something interesting. Of course, it must be something that, you know, can start or can, you know, uh, capture somebody's attention and you know make somebody want to read your paper okay so usually um i've seen many people using uh, quotes uh, others may use uh, statistics others can also use anecdotes so a quote is when you refer you you, you quote uh, you you refer to somebody by quoting them word by word you know uh, maybe somebody said a b c d so you can pick from a variety of quotes that we have, as long as it's relevant to the topic and it's interesting enough to capture somebody's attention. So you can quote philosophers, uh, politicians, um, activists, you can quote uh, famous business people, uh, media personalities. If there's something they say uh, uh, that is very interesting and it's relevant to what you are talking about, uh, then you can begin with that, you know, uh, you can quote them. Okay, and then you can as well use a statistic. And uh, these, these are my favorite because statistics are actually very convincing. When you use a statistic, uh, many people tend to think you are so informed about the topic to the point of knowing the details because statistics call for the details. Okay, so you can start with a suitable statistic uh, whenever it's possible. Uh, you know, statistics are numbers. You know, um, how many people have died from COVID-19. If you're talking about COVID-19, uh, today we are talking about at least salaries. So a good statistic would be, you know, comparing uh, the figures, the salaries for 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 the most established athletes and uh, maybe other professions by showing how much uh, they earn, okay? Or trying to show uh, what percentage, how many times, uh, how many times does a salary doc uh, a doctor salary going to an athlete salary? You know, if you try to show those um, the difference by you know comparing side by side, I think that is a good way of starting an essay because it it basically just shows the difference in in, in wages and in salaries between uh, athletes and other people, right? So you can as well go with that. Sometimes you might also start with a personal story, um, uh, an anecdote, which is usually a personal, true personal story that something that actually happened to you, a true event, okay. But this is now is very, this is usually limited because in most cases in essays, it is supposed to be research based. You're not supposed to be using first person pronouns. And you realize that for you to, to talk about yourself, to tell a story, something that's personal to you, uh, at some point you, you need to use uh, first person pronouns like I, me, us, mine, right? So as much as an anecdotes are available to us, they are usually limited in academic writing because if you are to use an anecdote, it will force you to, to refer to yourself, which in most cases in academic writing is prohibited. Okay, So you can use quotes, uh, statistics, or any other statement that you feel it's very interesting that uh, can really you know, uh, capture the attention of your, of your readers. The other thing you need to also do in, within the introduction is whatever hook you use, you need to contextualize it. Okay which basically means explain why readers should care. If, for instance, you use a, a quote, you know, you, you quoted maybe Cristiano Ronaldo, I'm referring to footballers because of the topic, you're talking about the least salaries. So if you're talking about uh, athletes that deserve high salaries, you might uh, quote maybe Cristiano Ronaldo if he happened to have said something relevant to the discussion. Uh, the next step is to, you need to also explain uh, why Cristiano Ronaldo's quote is important to the topic? Why should your readers care? What does it mean to your readers? Don't just leave it at that. You need to 
uh, also explain what it means. If you have used statistics, you need to also contextualize those statistics and tell your readers why should they care about that. If uh, we were talking about COVID-19 and you started by, you know, saying, according to the WHO, approximately, you know, one point something million people have since died since the COVID-19, have, have died from the, uh, from the virus, you need to also explain to your readers why that statistic matters to them and why they should care. So this can uh, occur in one or two sentences. The key here is that don't just uh, start with a hook and then you move uh, along to the background without uh, explaining what the, the figure you, you, you're using, the hook you're using means, okay? Now, uh, the other thing that you also need to include within the introduction is what you call the background information. Background information does not mean you start already explaining the points that you use, okay? It doesn't mean... Uh, for instance, if you're going to say at least the self salaries because of in the injuries they expose themselves to, in the background, you shouldn't start already explaining that. You should not start explaining um, the injuries and already mentioning the points that you're going to use. No. Within the background, you're just trying to conceptual, uh, situate your readers. Sorry, you're just basically situating your readers within the wider conversation by telling them information such as when did this debate begin? You know, it has, it must have had a starting point. When was this uh, story about at least salaries? Uh, Manet, when, uh, how is it going so far? Uh, are there any, you know, hashtags on the web that people have been using to express their, their, their sentiments or their opinions? Uh, are there any countries that have since moved to, to the stage of even developing laws or regulation to, you know, uh, uh, regulate salaries? Okay. Basically, what is happening around the world in relation to the topic? It is not about you starting already to preempt your ideas. This is just trying to explain the topic on a whole wider level. So that if somebody has seen a hashtag somewhere on the internet, but they never realized, uh, they never knew what it was all about, this is a point you bring it in. So that you just make them remember like, okay, so the hashtag uh, pay at least was basically about... Uh, about this topic, you know. So basically share information that can really help your reader understand the topic on a, on a wider perspective. What is happening around the topic? When did this topic become important? When did this start? Why is it important in society? Why, why, why is it even an issue? Okay, what are people doing? Is there social media um, activism, activism going on? Uh, are, several, uh, are there any governments that have since, you know, um, you know, even, uh, you know, develop laws to leg, to regulate uh, salaries? Okay, so this is just where you share information that you feel can help your readers understand the topic on a whole wider level. Now, uh, within the thesis statement, this is the last, usually the last sentence of introduction. So, in a standard essay, it is usually a last sentence of the introduction, which is which basically means. It is a single sentence. It is a single sentence statement, which must occur at the end of your introduction. If you put it elsewhere within the introduction, uh, it will not be seen. So it has to be the last sentence of your introduction. Okay. So the thesis statement is basically the last sentence of introduction that declares the structure of the paper, including highlighting the main points to be discussed. So usually uh, you need to highlight at least three points. So if the, the essay is begging you to pick a position, the thesis statement is where you indicate the position you are taking and at least three supporting points, which obviously will form uh, the body. Okay? You may have even 10 points, but uh, it's not like a must you put all of them there because if you are to write all the 10 points within that sentence, therefore that sentence is going to be so long. Uh, which will now make it or what you call hard to read text. Okay, so the thesis statement is essentially the last sentence of introduction. If you split it into two sentences, we'll only focus on the last of the two. So it's important you also ensure that it's just a single sentence, okay, which declares the position the paper is taking or the structure of the paper along with the main highlights, at least three if possible, okay. Of the paper. So basically, that is all about the introduction. Now, 
looking at this uh, topic, which I think the, is the same one that we've been using, if you look at the topic, it's about salaries, eh? high salaries for athletes. Uh, I think we all agree that uh, some athletes are a receiver or earn a lot of money. If you are to compare that with other people like doctors, uh, surgeons, and astronauts, you realize that these people are actually very rich. Okay, so uh, I have developed here a model introduction. Okay, for this uh, topic, and again, this is just a model introduction. Some of the figures I'm using here are actually not accurate. I just uh, just made up figures. I just wanted you to see how these parts are coming in, uh, together. Okay. So I've used color contrast. So uh, the blue color represents the hook, as you can see. And this, this other color, is it maroon? Will represent the, the explanation of the hook. And then the green color will be representing the background information. And then of course, the red part will be representing the thesis statement. So let us just read through and see how whatever we have just discussed, discussed here are coming together. So according to a recent BBC report, uh, averagely paid at least an over 35 million every week. Yet astronauts, surgeons, and lawyers who make up the most prestigious careers only make about half of that, of that annually. So again, these figures are just made up, but again, I'm just trying to show the wage gap between athletes and other professions. I think we we'll all, 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 all agree that uh, astronauts, uh, surgeons, and lawyers make up some of the most prestigious careers in the world. Okay, you hear somebody is a, is a surgeon, a lawyer, an astronaut, you expect that they are earning good money. But here I'm trying to show you that you know what, these people in every week they'll make 35 million dollars. Yet, these people that these other uh, people that we are thinking may be making a lot of money, they hardly make half of this per year. Remember. This is for one week, but even these people given a, a year, they can't even make half of this. So I think by, you know, just showing this huge contrast in salary, I think can really mind, it's, it's really mind boggling. Eh? You know, you you like wonder, wow, is this really happening? Okay, because, um, you know, you really want to know. You know, from the way I see it, I think after you've just read the first sentence, this person is trying to show you that indeed, you know what, at least are very rich. And how do I show that? I try to compare what they are earning with what other people in other professions are, are earning. So I think that now brings up the, the difference properly, rather than me just saying, at least make that five million every week. It doesn't really uh, catch my eye uh, that much if you just tell me that five million every week. But if you go to the extent of comparing with other people and showing the difference, now I think that one, can really uh, can really sell your beer. Okay, so I, I I proceed. The report further indicates that more than at least can buy eight averagely plus uh, averagely priced houses in one year in cash. Yet most Brits require up to thirty years to pay mortgage for a single house. So I'm trying to claim here that you know what, these at least can afford eight houses. And they can pay in, in cash within one year. I mean, within one year, they can buy eight houses. But most people need 30 years to afford one. So I think if you try to go to that extent, you can really uh, capture somebody's attention. Somebody who's really interested in this topic will think that your paper is very, very information. Okay? Again, you can go on and on. It depends so with the, how many words are you targeting for your introduction. If you're targeting more, more, more words, then obviously you might need to even uh, go into details, provide additional statistics, additional figures, you know. So it really depends on uh, how long do you need your introduction to be, okay? Now, if this report is anything to go by, then at least are some of the richest people on earth. So this is just a single sentence explanation of what, why, why you should care about these statistics why these statistics matter, why, what do they mean, okay? And therefore, after that, I just proceed to the, to, to the uh, background section where I begin the debate on whether at least the, the Lucrarius contracts they signed has lingered on for a while. It started in 2015 when, uh, you know, Brian Aswani, a Fox News reporter, 
publish an article comparing the salaries of various elite uh, footballers. Since then, the, deba the debate has taken different shapes, mainly on social media, where people have been expressing their views using the hashtag at least salaries. So you can see this is just a background uh, about when the topic started, how is it now uh, moving on. You can go into details and you can find this information by just doing a simple search. The articles that you'll be reading online, some of them will include some of the information that can fall under the background part of your introduction. Okay, you just you to choose out which ones are, um, are showing what you want to show. Okay, I think somebody has posed a question. <sighs> let me let me see. Uh, please zoom the screen. Okay. But I'll still share this video and I'll share this uh, this 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 small uh, notes here. Okay. So the debate on whether at least how the lucrative contract they signed has lingered on for a while. It started in 2015 when Brian a Fox News reporter, published an article comparing the salaries of various elite footballers. Since then, the debate has taken different shapes. Mainly on social media, where people have been expressing their views using this hashtag at least salaries. Okay, so that is just a background information. It could have started anywhere from anyone, but I believe in most cases everything you are doing it has a starting point. It's, you can trace it to some report, some study, you know, some news. You can really trace it down to where it started. If showing when it started is part of what you feel you need to share into your background. Okay. Remember the background, you're the one who controls what you share. But I just, as a, as a warning, try not to already preempt the discussion. As you can see, I haven't started talking about the benefits of high salaries or the negatives of high salaries for athletes. I haven't talked about that yet because that is what I'm going to discuss within the body. So at this point, I'm just trying to share with you information regarding the topic so that you understand it on a, on a wider level, right? So I think I'm done with my background. And again, the length of the background will depend on uh, how many words are you targeting for your introduction. I think at this point we were targeting 150 words, right? So 150, I think I did 182, but no problem. I think during editing and proofreading, you can uh, cut out a few sentences and words to achieve your desired word length, right? Okay, word limit. Yes, yeah, so that is uh, my background. And now I'm transitioning to my thesis statement. So while everyone seems to have plausible arguments in support of their positions on the topic, the hard truth is that professional athletes deserve every dollar they pocket because they risk injuries, they retire early, and uh, of course sacrifice family time. That is the, that's the, the, the thesis statement. So you can see I've taken a stand that they deserve. This is my stand. Okay, I've taken that stand that they deserve every dollar they pocket. And then I've gone ahead to include at least three reasons that I'm going to use to support this position. Reason number one is risk injuries. Number two, retire early. And the last one is family time. I could have had more, uh, more reasons. I could have more points. But if I had included them all here, maybe this sentence would have been too long. Okay, And I don't want that. So I need it to be very memorable, a sanctioned uh, kind of statement. The initial part here, while everyone seems to have plausible arguments, is just be trying to appreciate, you know what, this topic has two sides to the story. Okay? It has two sides to the story, and it's okay if you think otherwise. Just want to acknowledge the fact that this topic, uh, you could have been, you could well be on the other side of the debate, and it's perfectly okay as long as you can support your position. So I'm just uh, including that, but the key part is uh, from here, where I declare the position of the paper, and of course, now at least three reasons, a minimum of three uh, points, which I'm going to use to support that position. As you can see, my thesis statement is a single sentence, and it is at the end of this paragraph. If I had put this elsewhere, if, for example, I take it and, uh, you know, I put it here. If I put that there, then people will assume this is my thesis statement. Okay. We'll say, I think this is my thesis statement. And as you can see, it is not a proper thesis statement because it does not have the position and it does not include the three uh, points uh, that I'll, uh, I'll use in my, in, my, in my body. Okay. 
So it has to be the last sentence. And of course, it must be a single sentence. If I said it to, to split this into two sentences, okay, people will only assume this is a thesis statement. Okay. So for a standard essay, uh, the thesis statement is a single, uh, single sentence statement. And it must appear as the last uh, the last sentence of your introduction. So I think that is all about introductions. So let us look at uh, conclusions. And I think uh, conclusions are usually the most uh, confusing. I think I've seen people do a lot of wrong things within the conclusion, thinking that they're actually doing the right thing, but in fact, they're actually doing the wrong thing. Okay. So um, what do we need to have in the conclusion? The conclusion is usually basically a summary of your main ideas. It's usually a summary of your main idea. That is the basic thing to understand about a conclusion. And since it's a summary of the main ideas, it basically now means you should not be introducing any new information. Do not introduce new any new information, not even a single example that is new. It is a summary of the main points which you have already talked about within the body. And therefore, you should not even be citing anything because the things you're talking about are merely summaries of what you've already talked about. If there's any citation required, you already cited in the body. So there's no point of introducing any new information within the, uh, the, the conclusion. So let us look at a model conclusion here. So number one, you begin uh, by restating the thesis to remind your readers what the paper was all about. So restate the thesis statement. So we have talked about the thesis statement. This is the thesis statement. So you begin by restating it. You do not need to copy and paste. Just rephrase it in a different way. Okay, That will do the job of reminding your readers what the paper was all about. Remember this. Some of your readers will not have time to read the entire paper. In fact, CC Kama researchers, what we do when we have an assignment and you want to do uh, to get others from the internet, we don't read the entire articles we find. We just scroll down to the conclusion because that is where the summary is. Okay? That is where the summary is. So we just scroll down. So remember, some of your readers will not have enough time to read the entire paper. They just scroll to the conclusion. So it's just important you remind them what the paper was all about. And then, of course, you need to summarize all your points, okay, all of the main ones. Sometimes if it's a short essay, just summarize all of them. If it's a long one, maybe you can just pick out the most important ones, okay? This is the bulk of the introduction. The summary is actually the bulk of the introduction. In fact, if you are targeting 150 words for your conclusion, at least 130 or thereabout should be on the summary part summarizing the main argument that you had. Then leave maybe 20 words for the restating thesis statement or reminding your readers what the paper is all about and closing a closing statement, which is basically a takeaway message. Okay. Now, I've noticed that many people, when they are writing their conclusions, they make the entire conclusion about giving advice. You start now being a government advisor, what the government should do, what businesses should do, what society should do. If you are doing that and somebody did not have time, assume I did not have time to read your paper. So I just scroll to the conclusion to see what you, you know, the main points you had. And then getting there, I found that you're just basically talking about advice to the government. I'll go home thinking your paper was about a government advisory board. You are addressing the government on a range of issues. Yet your paper was about should at least be paid the salary, do they decide the salary they, they, they get? So if you decide to start giving advice, government should support at least salaries, government should introduce these measures, football clubs should do this, should do this. I'll just go home thinking, you are a member on a panel where you're deliberating a range of issues and you resolve that you are going to recommend to the government to do a, a, a number of things. So that is what the, the, the reader would get. And in most cases for academic writing, the reader is a lecturer. You want the lecturer to get your main point so that they can award you marks. So if the lecturer just reads the conclusion because of time and discovers that the paper you just made it about giving advice to the government, the lecturer can conclude that you did not have any points in the paper. You are off the topic and therefore you will score zero. 
Yet, in reality, you had the points in the body section, but you decided that in the conclusion, you're going to be advising the government. Who has asked you to advise the government? Okay, so make the conclusion about the su a summary. In fact, if you don't have time, just summarize the point. Don't even restart the thesis. Don't even give a takeaway message. Just summarize the main points you had. Okay, and leave it at that. Do not start giving advice to anybody. Just go ahead with summaries and you're done. Do not introduce any new information. And again, I'm warning you, a conclusion is a fully developed paragraph. It's not a sketch. I've seen people, uh, they start writing, then they realize last minute that, shit, I did not have an, a, a conclusion. And therefore, what they do, they just put two sentences and, uh, at the conclusion and leave it at that. There are also marks awarded for the conclusion. If your conclusion is not... It does not meet the requirements of a good conclusion. Obviously, you can't score the full marks for the concluding part. So it must also be a paragraph, a fully developed paragraph with an opening sentence, several explanatory sentences, and a concluding sentence. If, for instance, you decided that you're going to go with six sentences per paragraph, that should also apply to the conclusion. If your body section, you're working with six to eight sentences per paragraph, the same should apply to your conclusion. That's why... I always encourage you, plan for your conclusion even before you start writing. Assign it some weight. Okay? Already assign it uh, a number of words and try to limit the rest of the paper so that you still have the number of words that you intend to have for the conclusion. Because it's also a fully developed paragraph that will also be marked. So if you decide to make it a sketch, like a single sentence uh, kind of conclusion, you know, you're messing it all up. You might be having all the good points. The student will score the maximum points allocated for the body and the introduction, but they will score zero for the marks allocated for the conclusion. Therefore, the student has failed in some way. Okay. So my warning is that, my advice rather, is that whenever you want to start a paper and you know you need to you need to have a conclusion, please plan for it before you start writing. So that when you get there, you already have a plan for it. Don't do it as an afterthought, like something you just uh, do as last minute once you've already finished the paper. Again, avoid grammar mistakes in the conclusion. I've seen many people, uh, they have a very nice essay, but when they get to the conclusion, they are so sketchy, they commit all kinds of mistakes because they think, you know what, uh, I'm done with the paper. So the conclusion doesn't really matter. It also matters, it will be marked. So obviously you need to give it the seriousness you've given all other paragraphs. Now, let us look at model uh, conclusion. Uh, with the same topic in mind, okay? Uh, at least have high salaries. So, um, although the debate uh, on at least salaries has uh, taught a lot of attention with different sides putting all different sound arguments, the fact remains that elite at least have every coin they get and perhaps even more. So, you can see it's more or less um, a reference of uh, what we had in the last sentence of our introduction, okay? Uh, then I'm going to the summaries. Again, here I've used color contrast so that you can see the red part represents the, the restatement of the thesis, the green will be the summary, and then the blue one will be the closing statement. So, pro at least expose themselves to many injuries for the game, some of which are expensive to treat and can be career ending. Uh, the high salaries are therefore uh, well deserved to act as security against such injuries. Also, at least retire early because you'll continue explaining the same way, just explain in the body. Uh, thus, they deserve high pay so that they can invest in other areas to use once they can no longer play. Finally, uh, at least spend too much time away from their loved ones because we can explain that the same way you just explained in the body area. So for the high salary, it's necessary to enable them to travel home every, half, uh, every often to see their friends and families. Okay? So, um, uh, Siku Malizia easy, but uh, I'm sure you can do that because it's basically what you've already discussed in the body. So, I'm talking about injuries, uh, retirement, and uh, family. Assuming that that is the same points, those are the same points we had in the body of that paper, right? Even if you have a new point that you, you forgot to discuss, don't introduce it in the conclusion. I think I've also seen other people... Uh, maybe they had 20 points, but they could only manage to talk about 15 in the body. And therefore, they try to squeeze the five within the, within the conclusion. That is basically introducing new information, right? Because you're introducing things that you haven't talked about in the body. 
If you did not talk about it in the body, don't bring it in the conclusion. Don't even bring new examples. Because even if, let's say for the idea of injuries, you talked about um, maybe Eden Hazard, who was injured for, I think, uh, the 2020-2021 season. Maybe that is the example used to demonstrate the effect of injuries on, on athletes. Do not bring another guy as an example in the competition. Use the same, same Eden. All right? Do not, do not introduce any information. So I think that is all about um, introductions. Oh, I haven't talked about the closing statement. Okay, so the blue one uh, is a closing statement. Basically, a takeaway message. So here is where you can give advice to the government if you want to. If you are so, you know, charged up to advise the government, you can bring that uh, advice here in a single sentence or maybe two sentences, but don't make it the bulk of your conclusion. Okay? So I think that is all about introductions and conclusions. So I think from here now, you can go and uh, develop a good uh, introduction, a proper introduction for, you, for the paper, because I think we had stopped at uh, the introduction part. So from today, you can go back now, start from the introduction all the way down. Because I think we are, we are ready to, to call Shalan Mamboya Kunda paragraphs. So I think it uh, it quite easy for you to just now proceed from there. Have a good introduction. All these features, I need them to be there. All the features to Mongolia, the hook, uh, contextualizing the hook, background information, thesis statement. For conclusion, I, wanted to, uh, I want to see the summary. Summary is the most important thing in the conclusion. In fact, even if you don't state the thesis and you don't give a closing statement, as long as you have the summary, you are, you are good. Okay, and again, give it the respect it deserves. Do not just do it as an afterthought, something that you just do because you know you want to show that you have a concluding as a paragraph. No, you give it due respect. It's also a fully developed paragraph, only that you are not supposed to be citing. No citations should be in the conclusion because we are saying there are no new information here. You are basically just talking about what you've already discussed in the body. So why are you citing? No citations. However, in the introduction, you might be citing. It is not uh, required that you need to have citations within the introduction. However, if you have referred to a report, if you, are ref you have talked about some statistics, some figures, some quotes, then you need to also cite those, right? But if you decided not to go along with those, the statistics and the reports and um, the data, then you don't need to be citing things in the introduction, okay? However, you can cite, but even if you are citing in the introduction, do not be so, let there not be no, like, uh, you know, extensive uh, citations within the introduction. Maybe just one or two, okay? Because extensive citations will now fall uh, in the body where you are proving points, you want to counter check with scientific data, you want to integrate and support your assertions with scientific, uh, you know, publications. So obviously, uh, we expect that you will be doing heavy citations within the the body and not within the introduction. So that is all for today, guys. Um, uh, I think I'll be taking now questions for those who have questions, but uh, from here on, we will uh, again proceed from the, from here. I'll give you additional guidelines for what uh, for what we'll do next. So this is the time. Kaona maswali zilete hapa tuzijibu before tuendele.